Next year is 2024. Why is that special? Because it's a leap year. So that begs the question, how do you check in a formula in Excel, how do you use a calculation to work out whether the year you're in or you're looking at whether or not it's a leap year or not? On how many leap years between years? There's so many questions about le leap years, just so many questions. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. Let's let's go. All right, the first calculation we're just going to do is check to see if a year is a leap year or not. Now, I've got some data with some random dates here in column A, and I have a leap year column in column B. Well, the first thing I just want to check to see is if there are 29 days in 1958 in the month of February. So how do I do that? Let's just go in and we'll build up the formula a bit at a time. So we can use the date function just here. So if we type in equals day, date, and then we can use a function called year. So you can see we've got date, we've got year. Now the year is going to, is a nice function that extracts the year from any particular date. So that will extract 1958. Now I'm particularly interested in the month of February. Type in day 29 of February and press enter. So you can see that it's come up here, 1958, uh, sorry, March 1958. It's not February. So I already know that this is not a leap year. But let's see if we can tidy up this formula, shall we? So if we go back into this formula, what I'm just going to do here is just type in month and then close off this month formula, just the brackets at the end here and press enter. And I'm just going to force this going to be a general function. So I can see that this is month three. If I go down like so, I can see 1963 is a three, but 1964 is month two. So according to that, 1964 is a leap year because the 29th of um, February does exist in that year. So let's just tidy this one up a little bit. So let's just zoom in and see. So I can wrap this around in a beautiful if function. So equals if, open bracket, if this month here, okay, if the month of that is equal to two, I know it's a leap year. I have to put leap year in quotation marks because I literally want to see that text. Type in a comma, otherwise I want to put um, a blank in. OK, give you a moment to look at that function, copy it down. You can pause the video if you need to and then press enter. That's blank because it's not a leap year. And if I go and double click on the autofill, I can see leap years are just here. That's looking great. I love it. Nice and simple. There's other ways of doing that as well. Maybe you, come up, you can come up with your own way and put it in the comments below. However, what if you want to know how many leap years are between two dates. How do we do that? Okay, so here we have some simple data that you can type in if you want to follow along with this exercise. And what I want to know is say if somebody started on the 1st of January 2010, and if we put this into today's date, a nice little function for that is the today function, if you're unfamiliar with that. I want to know how many leap years are between those two dates without having to type in all of the dates and do what we did on the previous sheet. All right, so I've got this one here, number of leap years. This one leap years a century is a nice special um, surprise I have for you. So if we click on this one, let's zoom in and add in this formula just here. So what we're going to use here is we're going to type equals sum products. Okay, and we're going to just check to see, okay, if the modulus or mod of the row of indirect of whatever the year, the year of this date here, okay, add in a colon, oops, uh, an ampersand, the year for today's date, like so, which is good. Uh, close off the bracket for um, the indirect, and uh, close off the bracket for the that's great. Comma, if it's divided by four, and if it's equally divided, if it equals zero, then I want it to be a one. Otherwise, I want it to be a zero. 
So if I press enter, oh, I just got a light, slight calculation or correction I need at the end there. Let's click on OK. And I can see that there are three leap years basically between these two dates. So that is quite, I think you agree that this formula is not the easiest. So let's just break it down to understand how it's working because you might be able to use features of this formula in your other calculations. So what I'm gonna do here at the top is I'm going to choose this row and indirect. What does that do? So if I click over here saying column F and I'll type in equals row here and then open and then I'm gonna use the indirect function just here. And then uh, what I'll also do is I'm looking for the year of the start dates, closing there and I will concatenate. So that ampersand that I'm using just there is what they call a concatenation operator. I, it basically allows me to join text that's code or formulas with literal values. And I want that colon to be a literal value. And then with the year of this date just here. Okie dokie, uh, that looks good. So I've closed off the bracket for that. If I close off the bracket for any indirect and I close off the bracket for the row and I press enter, I can get a list of all the years here. So that's what this indirect function allows me to do. It allows me to programmatically work out the years from one to another. So what I want to do next is I would think, okay, how do I know which one of these are leap years? Well, for that, I use the mod function or the modulus function. So let's go in and I'm going to double click and then we can hopefully you can see this nice and clearly. I don't have to zoom in. So if I take the mod of whatever this is, okay, divided by four. Okay, so if you're looking at the arguments for the modulus here and you're typing it in there, if I, you can see down here, in fact, I will zoom in for this. So if I click in here, you can see the first argument, if I click on this one, is the, uh, of the modulus function just here is the number and the second argument is the divisor. So if I now press uh, enter, okay, I can see this one here has remainder two, remainder three, remainder zero, which means it's equally divisible or divisible by four so the zeros are the leap years, yeah? Uh, if I was wanting to be this, absolutely prove this to you, because uh, sometimes you might be sitting there thinking, I know Simon, I don't understand, it doesn't seem to be working. So if I go up to here, and let me just go equals, and it's just basically copied and pasted the same formula, you can see 2012 is a leap year, 2016 is a leap year, 2020 is a leap year. So that really good. So the last part of this argument here, if I go back here, you can see is the if statement. So I wanna basically check to see if this, okay, um, is zero, I want it to be one. Otherwise, I want it to be zero. And I can press enter and I can see ones and ones here. There we, there we go. So that's the next stage. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to sum all of this up. Use the sum product uh, for that one. Uh, so that goes through and it loops through that one there. So there we go. That's how you can work out how many leap years between two dates. But let's say we will fast forward a century to the year 2123, 100 years from now. So how do we work out that? Now, the interesting thing about this, if I bring in a website from Greenwich, I don't think you can get more authoritative than that. If you just look here um, about what is a leap year, it says to be a leap year, the year must be divisible by four, which we've done. No problem. Except for end of century years. Now there's new rules for this. It must be divisible by 400, okay? Well, this means that the um, year 2000 was a leap year, okay? Although 1900 was not. Now this per hope um, gives us a problem. So um, because all um, century years are divisible by four, you know, four into 100 uh, goes 25 times. So yeah, how do we account for this? Let's go back to our Excel. Let's just switch back to it. Here we go. And then we do the leap year century. Uh, and what I'm going to do with this one here is I will just take this formula because it is basically okay. And I'm just going to pop it into this leap year century formula just here. 
Now, there's a little expansion button. I don't know if you can look in the top right hand corner just here. There's that little drop down arrow. It's a fantastic arrow that you can click on and it just expands this just here. And then what I will do is I'm just going to use the alt and the enter on the keyboard. And you see it brings that down to a new line. So you can see that there. Alt and enter brings down to a new line. And let me just bring this one down to a new line as well. And I'm just going to do this a few times. And I'll put this here as well at the one and alt and enter and bring that. In fact, I'll bring that down. So what I want to do here is do multiple checks and conditions using what they call logical operators. Let's get zooming in. Let's get close and personal with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is wrap this one in brackets because I want to be absolutely sure that this one is OK. Brilliant. And then I'm going to add in an asterisk. I'm going to bring this down to a new line and I'm going to copy all of this as well like so and let me just bring that down to a new line remember alt and enter and paste this one in so what i'm doing first is i'm going to make sure that the year is divisible by four to return zero but i need to make sure that it's not um divisible by 100. So you remember going back to this statement from Greenwich here, remember it's it must be divisible by 400 if it's a century year. Only if it's divisible by 400 would that be a leap year. All right, so let's just go back to this one here. Let's get back and zoom in here, uh, which is good, excellent. But I do want it to be divisible by 400. So I'm gonna use the um, um, plus symbol just here, alt and enter to go down to a new line and plus down here, that's good. And then this one is going to be 400. And I've got that extra uh, line, just one just here. I'm just going to press um, delete to move this up one. And I'm just going to tidy up this formula a little bit and just review this one. So it's going to use the sum product. If the, um, uh, the years in between are divisible by four, okay, but not divisible by 100, okay, as long as they're both there, they will count it as a leap year. Or using this here, OK, if a year is divisible by 400, which should keep that Greenwich uh, statement happy. Right. Let's just see if this one works. I'm just going to press enter. And yep, it comes up with a three. It looks like it's working just here. Uh, let's just see if we can test it by going over many years. Now, this would be great for you as historians or have to cover hundreds of hundreds of years and ah so you now can see because 1900 is not a leap year remember if we went back to this one here and just here remember it says 1900 was not a leap year because it's not divisible by 400 so we can see that one just there excellent uh let's just go a f um years into the future so let's say what date is it today the 26th of the 9th 20 uh 21 23 oh, oh, oh dear oh, maybe i can get my glasses on and oh dear and i could present her and if i'm still working for the company having been 223 years old well i'll be older because i'll be older because i'm starting to work for that company i will know that there are 54 leap years in between those dates because there's two century years that aren't included um and then of course there's just 56 leap years so i suppose you would say this one here is wrong and this one even though it's a bit ocd and you're probably never going to use it too much is right and hopefully i will take the elixir of life and live to 223 plus years of age <laughs> great so there we go how you do leap years in excel now, if you've watched this far, uh, well done. Um, and you've got all that you need to know to keep you good for the next, well, forever, basically, until they change the calendar. Just thinking of other ways that you can do this here. Let's have a quick look, see. So, um, so leap year. Uh, let's say dates. So, um, so what you can do here is you can say, oh, you know, is this the year of this date? OK, whatever that one is there. OK, um, and just comma and then 29. So that gives you that date in here, which is great. Excellent. But when then we can just see, OK, what's the day for this? Yeah. So if I then go and then change this to a general, I can see one if I go down. 29 so <laughs> it's just like an example that you can see there uh which is pretty cool another way you can do it is to check to see if the zero of march exists that's kind of really the zero 
of March, kind of a weird one. So I can use the date function as well to check the year of whatever date I'm looking at just here. Yeah. And then I can type March the zero. That's kind of a weird one. Press enter. And I know this comes up as date. So let me just force force this as general um, just here. But what I can do here is I can have a look to see what day exists then. So you can see that's 28. So it's not a leap year. But if I also come down here, I can see that that's 29. And then I can obviously use a nice little if statement to check to see if that's a leap year or not. Um, leap, like so. There we go. And I auto fill down. There we go. So there's many ways of checking to see whether a leap year exists or not. There's another function people say I like to use end of month. So end of month of whatever day it is. So if I, for instance, if I go to end of month and then I work out the date of uh, the year as well. Uh, so this one just here. Uh, here we go. And I'll just do the first. There we go. That's good. Uh, comma. Let's do months one. Oh, sorry. Zero It's on the same month. Close that one off and press enter. And then, of course, if I, oh, I need to know the date. So I'll just put the day in um just here so that's 28 and if i come down here that's 29 it's sort of doing the zero of march it's a bit longer winded that one is there but some people like to use eo month just there and of course i would encase this in an if statement uh as well uh equals 29 there we go then zero up oh, leap yeah otherwise not okay and then that will just work there so there you go. You've got plenty of options to check whether or not it's a leap year or not. So hope it all goes well for you in 2024 and 2028, et cetera, and the other leap years. If you've got anything out of this and you've enjoyed this, how to check if a year is a leap year tutorial in Excel, then um, make sure you click on the thumbs up button and uh, click on the subscribe button as well so you're not missing future videos it's really appreciated that'd be great uh please check us on other social media channels so we're on instagram and 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 facebook and twitter etc and linkedin um we're on tiktok we've got hundreds of excel videos i'm sure you'll find one that tickles your fancy there and answers a question if you would like us to come to you to train you and your organization, we're more than happy to do that. Whether it's classroom based, where we can come to you, we can provide laptops with software already installed on it, you can come to us, or if you prefer, you can do live online training. There's nothing like that to ask questions of the instructor, show the instructor, the trainer, your issues, your problems to get answers to your questions is just a wonderful way of learning. Great, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.